Hello and welcome back to another day of Advent of Code. We're here for day 24 and I'm going to show you how I solved day 24 without actually solving it. Uh, so let's jump into it. Okay, so the input for day four is a program for an adder. Mine looks something like this uh, and we will receive 14 inputs. That's what this INP instruction is. And it'll perform a bunch of operations. So you'll see an input, a bunch of operations, an input, a bunch of operations, et cetera, et cetera. And the end of the program, if Z is equal to zero, that means that the, the program was valid. Uh, and so for part one, it asks, what is the largest 14 digit number that can be input? And digits can be one through nine. And that's what this input W will be. So it'll input one digit at a time. And part one is what's the biggest number, and part two is what's the smallest number. Now, the way I approach this is I read through some of these uh, instructions here and found some slight optimizations to what some things mean. For instance, multiply x zero doesn't really care what x is, we're just gonna assign zero into x. Uh, dividing z by one doesn't do anything. You're just gonna keep z the same thing. Uh, and there's a few other things similar to that. Like, I believe there's adds with zeros. Um, yeah, for instance, like, there is an add with two variables. Um, this, for instance, is always going to uh, add a zero from y to w. Now, w is going to be an unknown variable, and that's going to vary per chunk of things here. So while this runs, it's gonna be the first digit while this runs, it's going to be the second digit, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I did is I built a program to basically, there's a lot of code here. <laughs> I have not simplified this in any way, shape or form. Um, I built some code that kept track of our variables and they can either be an integer if they're just a normal number, they can be some sort of expression, which is going to be our, um, our uh, some math, you know, either adding, multiplying, mod, dividing, etc., cetera. Uh, or they can be var, and var represents our digit variable. And so that's gonna start, it starts at negative one just because the first one's gonna increment it to the zeroth digit. Um, and basically what I do is run the program, run, run the program, and keep track of each of the operations. Of course, I have a few shortcuts, like for instance here, the multiply by zero just uh, assigns this to zero. Actually, I think I simplified the code where I don't need that special case there. Yeah, so you can see I have the this here where it multiplies by zero. Um, but yeah, that just made things slightly simpler. Uh, but anyway, back down to here. Basically, I'm processing all of these operations. And I noticed one thing about the input. Day 24. I noticed that uh, there is this comparison. Where is the... Yeah, for instance, this one here. There's a comparison between x and w, and then x and 0. So what this is doing is... If they are equal, it will set x to 1, and then it'll set x to 0. If they're not equal, it will set x to 1. And for some of these, when x is 0, it later gets multiplied by y, and that uh, allows you know, this z to eventually become 0. Um, so necessarily, x has to match w at some point in time. And for these first bunch, it's not possible because x is always positive, or x is always a, a number that's going to be bigger than w. For instance here, x is at least 15, and so it can't ever be equal to w. But there are a few places where there are negative numbers, for instance here. And we know at this point, we since we are subtracting from x, it can be negative, and that's one of the potential solve points. Now, I didn't actually solve this problem. The way I approached this problem is I found places where there were negatives and made a system of equations. Then I described that system of equations to a piece of software called Z3 Theorem Prover, or Z3 Solver, which is kind of magic, admittedly. Uh, you basically describe a system to it and it will tell you first whether there is a solution and then two, it will give you an example of the solution. And if you use the optimizer, which is what is convenient for this problem, it will optimize that solution to a bound for you. 
So basically what I did here is I described the system to Z3. I said there are 14 integer variables here. We are going to do an optimization. Each of those variables must be uh, greater than or equal to one and less than 10. So this bounds those digits between one and nine. Um, then if I encounter those negatives, which is what I was talking about before, I, um, I say that the particular digit we're looking at is equal to whatever the current variable of x is plus that negative value. Um, and so I have this little 2z3 thing, and I'll show you this in a second, but I basically wrote my own little mini data structures for variables, expressions, and numbers. Uh, and then this is just to convert those variables, expressions, and numbers into um, the types that, that I expect here. Actually, I probably could have made this slightly simpler by doing this here. Um, it doesn't actually matter because my specialized expression types handle addition as well. But basically, I'm just telling Z3 that whatever particular digit is equal to this expression here, whatever that expression may be, uh, it ends up being in terms of the other variables as well. And at the end, I say that the sum of all of the digits, and here I'm just multiplying by the powers of 10, is equal to this sum variable. And my goal of the optimization problem is to maximize that sum variable. Then you check, and this is telling Z3, hey, make sure this is possible. Uh, as soon as it tells you that it is satisfiable, it will give you a model which contains the solution. So that's basically how my problem works. And then for part two, I just changed these two characters to IN instead of AX, and it minimizes the problem instead of maximizing. So I didn't really have to think about any of the modular arithmetic or any of the actual iteration or solving parts. I basically just described the system and let Z3 handle all of that for me, which is hilarious, amazing, and <laughs> Z3 is magic, essentially. Um, but let me show you the rest of what I had to do here in order to get to that part. So I had to know, uh, I mean, this is my Z3 conversion. So I have my expression, I have my variable, and sometimes I have integers. Um, also, sometimes I have Booleans for the equals equals check. So uh, convert Booleans to integers. If they're integers, I just return them back. If they're variables, I get the Z3 variable equivalent of them. And then Z3 defines all of the operators on it. So it has addition, multiplication. It doesn't have integer division, but true division is integer division if you're using integers. So that's why this looks a little bit weird. And it also defines mod. And so I basically just grab the operator from my expression type, which has a left-hand side, an operator, and a right-hand side, and then recursively convert all the parts. And let me show you my expression type. Uh, so this is my variable type. This represents the digits. Um, it's just basic class stuff. For addition, uh, we short circuit on zero. And otherwise, we make an expression if we don't know how to resolve it. And it turns out uh, variables only do addition. They don't participate in any of the other um, operators. So we just ignore the rest of those operators. I guess it also does equals equals. And um, we can just assert, actually, I think this is never true. I don't think this ever gets run, but it's a leftover from when I sloppily put this together. And then I have my expression type, which is very similar in that like I have short circuits on zero and zero one for multiplica multiplication in addition, uh, but then I implement all the other operators. And it's basically just building a tree of expression objects. And then later we convert that tree of expression objects into Z3 expressions and then just let the optimizer solve it for us. But that's basically it. I had to do this because circular types, uh, but other than that, I just describe the problem and let Z3 solve it for me, which I think is really cool. Anyway, that's uh, day 24. Hopefully you found this interesting and I will see you for the next day tomorrow. Have a good one. Bye.